The irrational number ln 2 can be written as the infinite series 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 5 minus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 7 minus 1 over 8 and so on. We're adding the reciprocals of all odd natural numbers and subtracting the reciprocals of all even natural numbers to the exception of 0. If we multiply this equation by half, we get half ln 2 equals 1 over 2 minus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 6 minus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 10 minus 1 over 12 plus 1 over 14 minus 1 over 16 and so on. Let's put a 0 before each term in this infinite series and let's add these two infinite series together. We get 3 over 2 ln 2 equals 1 over 1 plus 0 plus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 5 plus 0 plus 1 over 7 minus 1 over 4 and so on. Let's clean this bottom series up a bit by getting rid of the zeros. Now there is a pattern to this infinite series. We're adding the reciprocal of the first two odd natural numbers then subtracting the reciprocal of the first even natural number, then adding the reciprocal of the next two odd natural numbers, then subtracting the reciprocal of the next even natural number, then adding the reciprocal of the next two odd natural numbers, and so on. In the complete infinite series, we add the reciprocal of all odd natural numbers and subtract the reciprocal of all even natural numbers aside from zero. But in the ln2 infinite series, we also add the reciprocal of all odd natural numbers and subtract the reciprocal of all even natural numbers aside from zero. This suggests that ln2 equals 3 over 2 ln2. What's going on here? These infinite series are conditionally convergent. What this means is that if all terms were positive, the series would not converge. The positive terms would add up to infinity, and the negative terms would add up to negative infinity. So if we pick any real number, like 2, we can add up the first few positive terms to bring the partial sum above 2, then we can add the first few negative terms to bring the partial sum below 2, then we can add the next few positive terms to bring the partial sum above 2, then we can add the next few negative terms to bring the partial sum below 2, and so on. With the partial sums oscillating around and converging to 2. Of course, we don't want all real numbers equal to each other. You can't do much math with one number. So what do we do? Well, the commutative law of addition allows us to exchange pairs of terms, but we have no evidence suggesting that it applies to the exchange of an infinite number of terms. So our resolution is to conclude that the commutative law of addition doesn't apply to the exchange of an infinite number of terms, at least when rearranging conditionally convergent series. And so, we are not permitted to rearrange these infinite series to make them identical. But if we only use partial sums to determine the sum of those infinite series, we never actually add infinitely many terms. So what if we ever only rearrange the terms needed to make the partial sums equal? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and thanks for watching.